I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your cattle market summary for the week ending March the 22nd where people are taking inventories, taking inventories of everything that they lost in the flood, uh, whether it be facilities, uh, vehicles, uh, tractors, equipment, tools, uh, whatever they lost. Uh, on top of trying to take inventory how many calves they lost, how many cattle that they lost. Uh, we, we've seen inventory uh, come in last week at the end of the week on cattle on feed, which was kind of an eye-opener as bad as the weather was and everything this winter. Showed it had a lot heavier placements up in the northern plains, which uh, is a little bit hard to swallow. But uh, just everybody taking inventories. I think we need to figure out a way for people to report uh, death loss of cattle. And uh, we, we keep taking stabs in the dark at it and, and nobody really knows uh, what that is. You know, if we went by how many calves maybe in Nebraska, say there was 1.7 million calves, say we lost a quarter of those calves. And, and not just through this last flood, but I'm talking about through uh, the whole horrible winter that they've had up there. Uh, say they lost 25% of the calves. Some people lost all their calves. Uh, everybody lost some, but say lost a quarter of them, that'd be 425,000 calves. Uh, now we've heard them say a million calves, maybe a million cattle, but I, w I would find it hard to believe a, a million calves. But uh, if you believe the last inventory report uh, for January 1st, said that Nebraska had about 6.8 million head of cattle. Let's say they lost 15% of those cattle, which is, I would say, fairly conservative uh, throughout the whole winter and, and not just counting the big flood and, and all the terrible uh, things that's happened over the last week and a half or two, but let's say 15%. That would be over a million head of cattle. I think that would be pretty easy to swallow. Now let's talk about the losses we've seen on the other side of the border over in Iowa. Talk about, uh, you know, it's been a horrible winter all through the northern plains up through there. And uh, I think we've lost a lot of cattle. Uh, so I think if we just had an easy way and, and maybe not uh, the same way that they collect inventories uh, on head counts or cattle on feed, but just a, a way that people could report in uh, what their death loss is, it would be uh, something that we could uh, kind of sink our teeth in, but kind of hard to figure how we do that. But it's not just the cattle that's been lost in this flood by the farmers and the, and the ranchers. How about all the grain that's been lost? I mean, terrible. And, and it's, it's not just uh, at home storage, but a lot of big commercial elevators were completely uh, swamped and flooded out there. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, a lot of, of uh, on-farm storage and not just little deals, big time deals. If you've seen a lot of the pictures, you can count uh, uh, the silos, the grain storage, everything that's up there, uh, even smaller bins. But I tell you what, what a mess. Whenever the, those, bang, those bins uh, fail and you get water and all that, I mean, you talk about a stinking nasty mess. Uh, that grain uh, ferments and that water gets rotten and then the stench that goes along with it. Uh, one of my buddies, Steve Whitaker, up in Wathena, Kansas in the flooded area, he was telling us one time about what it's like trying to clean out one of those nasty bins up there. And, and he was talking about some beans that had gotten wet up there. And, and uh, the best way I heard to describe it, and he said it was worse than cat shit. And that was enough for me right there. And, I, and you can imagine the, the stench, the cleanup, uh, the mess. Uh, a lot of those crops won't be planted. There's no way they can get water off of them. They're going to be take a long time to get those fields back in shape. And uh, it's going to be a huge, huge impact for a long, long time. But let's talk about the board for last week. April live cattle futures. Monday we're down 77. Tuesday up 80. Wednesday up 45. Thursday up 32 cents and Friday down 17 with April live cattle futures ending the week at 129.72 up 62 cents for the week a lot of help from the hog situation March feeder cattle Monday was up 32 Tuesday up 60 cents Wednesday was unchanged Thursday up 52 Friday up 22 with March feeder cattle ending the week at 143 even that was up a dollar 68 for the week Let's talk about lean hogs, uh, the hog deal. Ever since uh, China 
uh, had, had made a statement that they are going to need some U.S. pork imports because uh, they've had such trouble with sickness over there. They've lost a lot of their herd. They're having to call a lot of the pigs. They're going to be into a big problem. But uh, it sounds like we are going to be sending some pork over there. Look at your, your lean hog futures. They were up uh, big time the week before, but just this past week. Monday up $2.22. Tuesday off 20 cents. Wednesday up the $3 limit. Thursday up the extended $4.5 limit. Friday was unchanged but had huge swings from $2 higher to $2.50 lower and then come all the way back to unchanged. But your April lean hog futures ended at $78.32. Uh, very few sell live anymore but that's around $58.75 for a live hog. But uh, big time uh, charge and, and it's really turned this hog deal on its ear. If, uh, if we should start sending a lot of pork to China, I've talked about it before, uh, if, if they start to rely on us for some of their protein needs, they get some of that pork, they realize how good that is. If it works smooth, we get in good trading relationships, Trump's working on that for us. We start sending a lot of beef over there, uh, we don't have enough supply. And uh, we talked about uh, they, they're only down about 16% on their herd over there and already needing some U.S. pork. If, uh, if they should end up uh, getting uh, sickness and fever into the, all those big facilities they have over there, uh, we don't have enough supply to satisfy them. They may have to turn to beef. Uh, they're used to pork. They would rather eat pork, uh, but maybe they haven't had a, a good uh, high choice U.S. steak. And uh, they, once they sink their teeth into that, then they're really going to want some of it. But I tell you what, that is going to be a big, big deal. And uh, just it's something to continue to watch. But uh, look at some of your out front uh, cattle futures. Live cattle for June was up $1.58 for the week at one twenty three fifty. April feeder cattle ended the week at 148.80. That was up a dollar 88. Your fat cattle trade, with all the floods we've seen, all the bitter cold weather, the mud that these feedlot cattle have been pulling and trudging and, and just trying to stay warm, and uh, the trouble you know, guys been having getting their cattle fed, uh, the, the the places that's been washed out. There's feedlot cattle been. There's been a lot of death loss there too. It's not just cows and calves. But everything going together, you would have thought that we could get up to $1.30 was not to happen. Uh, if, if the Northern Plains could have got $1.30, they could have got a little more in the Southern Plains. But the Southern Plains is down there. Uh, you know, there's some places in, in uh, Northern Kansas that's hurt. But you get in the Texas Panhandle, it's been dry as a bone, been a fairly mild winter, except for some bad winds that hadn't been too bad at all down here. But the best the Southern Plains could do was 128. That was a dollar more than, than last week. Nebraska, Colorado, Wyoming area up there, they were able to get uh, $2 for the most part at 129. That's knocking right on the door at 130. And who knows, maybe this week we can get it. But on a dress basis, 208, that was three to mostly $4 higher. So uh, did, did gain some ground on the fats, but just uh, I'll tell you what, that elusive 130, uh, I don't know what it would take to get over that hump. Box beef cutout values uh, kind of seemed like they, they peaked and then they went back down and then, and then we saw another charge come on. And, uh, and for the week, your choice cuts, your average trade for the week, $228.95, up $1.25 compared to the average of the previous week's trade. And then select cuts, $218.66 down 41 cents from the average of the previous week. And, uh, and your Friday closes, the last part of the trade, were very close to those values that was the bulk of last week's trade. Your choice select spread now $10.29. Uh, your volume was on the lighter side at 478 loads of cuts, grinds, and trimmings. Your slaughter, they got it back up there. These packers, they need to be harvesting all the cattle they can get. They did a ton of forward contract uh, on their on their uh, beef um, supplies and so they've got to have a lot of product on hand to satisfy those supplies uh, for their out front sales and if, if they don't then they're going to get short of their spot products so they've got to keep going and they had some hiccups through some of the storms and different things but they got it back up this last week 631,000 head that's a pretty good clip for them 
That's 34,000 more than the previous week and 20,000 more than the same week a year ago. Uh, I talked a little bit about the cattle on feed report. Uh, it was kind of a surprise here. We finally got back on schedule. It was awful nice the first part of this year due to the government shutdowns. We were either behind uh, schedule on, on your cattle and feed reports. We weren't sure which ones we were going to get or when we got them. But the market didn't receive a jolt from them because people weren't on their toes looking at them. Now we got one that was on schedule. March 1st, uh, cattle and feed inventories come in at 100.7% of the same time a year ago. The estimate was 99.7, so that's a little bearish there, a full percent higher. But placements is where the big shock come in. We just assumed because we've been having such a horrible winter up in the northern plains and places that they would have been down for the year. Uh, your average of analyst guess was 4% down compared to the same uh, time a year ago at 96%. Your placements come in at 102.2%. That is very bearish for that. And uh, if you look at some of the placement numbers, Nebraska placements were 103% of a year ago, uh, only 88% of January. Uh, so, you know, we kind of expected that. But Iowa, look at Iowa. Iowa supposedly placed 113% of the feeder cattle on feed as they did the same time a year ago. I guess the ice road truckers uh, had come down and, and, and pulled under some pots and pulled them. Because I tell you what, it was pretty nasty in Iowa for the most part during February. And then you look at the same time to January. Now January was worse for the most part, uh, but your February placements in, uh, compared to January were 120%. But man, they put a lot of cattle in feedlots in the state of Iowa and those Iowa uh, farmer feeders for the most part, but Texas was only 101%. You would have thought they would have placed more down in the, in the Texas lot. Some of those big outfits have, have lots in the Northern Plains and the Southern Plains too, but only 101% placed in Texas, and that was 88% of uh, the previous month. But cold storage come in. Uh, your your uh, red meat supplies were 2% larger in freezers than last month and 2% larger than last year. That's all of red meat, which includes pork, even though they advertise it as the other white meat, that's still red meat. But total beef supplies in freezers on your cold storage report, down 6% from, uh, from a month previous, but up 4% for the previous year. And there's a lot of stuff that's cryovac and stored anymore, guys, and that's a, another way that we can kind of get set up for a downtrend in the market. But let's talk about some of your feeder cattle markets. Your real-time index on Cattle Market Central ended the week at 141.60 based on an 800-pound steer. That's a seven-day moving average, just like the CME index. That was up $5.47 just from the previous week, just from the previous Friday. That is huge to make up that much ground just in one day, let alone a seven-day moving average. But just unbelievable how people, when the weather perked up, and we knew that when the weather got a little bit better, people would get hungry for feeders again, even though a lot of those Northern Plains lots are, are just, uh, you know, still trying to, to catch their breath from all the flooding and the mud and everything. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of feedlots other places too. And uh, a lot of guys got hungry for feeder cattle. Your cash feeders in your sale barns were three to eight bucks higher around the circuit, and that includes the northern plains. There were some places going further north outside of the flooded area, and those guys were pretty hungry too. Calves and stocker cattle, especially, five to ten bucks higher, as we're getting up on the time where a lot of these turnout dates are right on us. April the 15th is right up there. And the Flint Hills and that massive. Uh, grazing region there that runs pretty much from Topeka all the way down to Wichita there on the east side of Kansas that vast area of grazing up there they are they're burning those pastures off the Indians learned many moons ago that if they burned those pastures off they come back more plentiful and it got rid of a lot of the 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 careless weeds the brush and things like that and when you go through that country now it just looks like a park out there it's just absolutely beautiful but they're burning those pastures off. That's quite quite an eerie thing, especially if you're like on the 
to the Kansas Turnpike at night going through there and they're burning those pastures off. It's really something to see. But there's enough moisture in the ground on that. After they burn those off, just within days, that fresh green grass, blue stem will start coming up and then just within a week or two, it's just gonna be lush and beautiful out there. If you turn some cattle out there with the right condition, in a thinner flesh condition, empty, cattle hadn't had anything good and green to eat for a long time, they will absolutely explode when you turn them out. A lot of them, when they come off that load and shoot, put their head down immediately, and, and the others just fall on top of them. It's just it's quite something to see, and, and when you see that, you know that cattle are meant to graze. That's, that's what they're for, that's what their bellies are made for. We have gotten used to feeding them grain because like we like that sweet red meat that, that it causes. But let's look at some of your individual quotes uh, late in the week there. Eastern Missouri Commission Company in Bowling Green, Missouri had a big feeder special, 2300 head, and you can throw a rock to uh, Illinois right there. But uh, it's John, Justin Angel, uh, and company there had a good sale on Friday, had 54 head of 671 pound stalker steers bring 166.75. Uh, talking to a guy Erickson, Nebraska on Saturday, not your typical uh, Saturday sale, but Erickson, Nebraska has a big time feeder cattle auction on Saturday, 2300 head there. They had 95 head of fancy 605 pound stalker steers there, bring a buck 95. We hadn't seen that yet. And then let's look at something outside the region entirely. Shasta Livestock Auction Yard in Cottonwood, California. They've got grazing out there too. That is a long ways uh, outside the main circuit there, but 58 head, 475 pound light steer calves there, bring 177. That's a look at your week's markets from a home DV auction office here in Canyon, Texas. We'll talk to you next week.